today on Divorce Court. My wife, Kayla, is an immature, spoiled brat. I made a lot of mistakes in the past, but I'm just here to fix it. She doesn't want to take on responsibility, she doesn't want to pay bills, and she doesn't want to work full time. She thinks that she's right all the time. I'm starting to feel more like her parent rather than her partner. Lachey needs to fix her attitude. Kayla lies way too much. She even lied when she proposed to me. Deep down inside, she, she's really petty. Our lease is up in three months. If things don't change by then, I'm gonna go my way and she's gonna go back to her family. I don't wanna lose her. And it's scary. It really is. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Lachey Wallace and Kayla Clyburn. The two of you have been together for two years, married for one. Ms. Wallace, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here today? Because I understand that even from the beginning, at the proposal, there was problems. Well, that, that'll be correct. Um, after we reconnected, everything was good. Like, mm -hmm. we were hanging out every day. We spent a lot of time together. And, you know, we talked about getting married. So she had said, um, I need to save for a ring or whatever. And I'm like, I don't really need a ring. You know, it's just mm -hmm. the fact of we're making a commitment. Mm -hmm. So I'm over her house one day and she, I see a ring near her room. So I'm like, whose ring is this? You know, you wanted to propose, just do it. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's like, I don't know whose ring it is basically, mm -hmm. but we could use it. So I'm like, cool, just do it. Cause I didn't think she was gonna do it anyway. But she proposed to me mm -hmm. and I accepted it and we were good ever since. Five months later, we got married and moved into the house or whatever. and. There was a laptop that she bought from her house when she moved. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the laptop. I'm about to clear it out, just making sure there's no important files on mm -hmm. there. I see pictures of her and her ex. So I'm going through the pictures, you know, being nosy. I come up on a picture of the ring, but it's not my hand. <laughs> so. I'm looking at the laptop and I'm looking at my finger, looking at the laptop, looking at my finger like this is the same ring. Whose finger was it on? Was it on her finger her ex. or her ex's finger? Basically, she knew that this was her ex's ring. But when I asked her, did you know who ring it was, she she lied. Miss Clyburn, would you lie about that for? Not really um, a big deal. I, I lied because I wanted to marry her. I knew that when you get married or when you propose, you have a ring, and I didn't have enough money for a ring. So I thought of the idea of, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong when, mm -hmm. I, when I did it, or I knew it was wrong when I thought about doing it, but I wanted to marry her, and this is my way. I knew she was mm -hmm. coming over. Let me just put this ring right here. And I, I knew it was wrong, but um, it worked. Right, right. <laughs> and that's, that's the problem. She set up the whole thing. It, right. Like, right. I thought it was just a coincidence. Oh, it's a ring right here, right, but yeah. she plotted it. And oh, I don't think that's a plot. That is a I plot. Th no, I think that was a romantic plan, a gesture. <laughs> to, she, she was trying to, you know, she couldn't get, get a ring. She used somebody else's. I don't, wh why does that bother you so? It was her ex's ring. I get that. You not only did you lie about it, but you knew that that was your ex ring. Mm -hmm. Your ex's ring. Like, was it nice? I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to throw it in the trash just because of the simple. You fact. had to throw it in. Yes, the trash. that's just foolish. I got up and I threw it in the trash, and now it's in you some. You sell uh, it. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's that hurts her even more. If she spent money on the ring and she gave it to me, now it's in the trash. Yeah, that's paying the stupid tax. You know what I mean? Money is money is money. But anyway, Ms. Wallace, tell me about the dating app. To me, I would have broken out with that one, but go ahead. <laughs> so she's in the shower one day and I just keep hearing notification after notification and there's a different type of sound. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, usually a text message is like a bing, mm -hmm. but this is like a another no type of notification. Right. So I look over and it's like this lesbian dating app. And I'm like, when did we start doing this? I thought we was trying to like repair. Was this before you got married or after? This is after. After. This is like a couple months ago. Ms. Clyburn, what were you doing on a, a okay, dating app? Okay, well, since she skipped the part where we separated, um, Lachey basically told me she didn't want me physically, emotionally, none of that. So I was hurt by it. Yes, I did say I didn't want to be in this relationship anymore. Um, but f 
hearing her say that she's done with me, it broke my heart. And I'm just, I, for me to get over somebody, I have to talk to somebody else. I know that's not the smart and mature way to go about it, but that's what I did. But I don't, yeah. Lache also had, did, you, did you skip the part that you had told her you were done with her over emotionally, physically, in every way possible? I don't think I necessarily skipped that part. The thing is, <laughs> the thing no, is. No, 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 no. You and I aren't on the same page. Did you say that stuff to her? That you were done? That yes. you were over? So when you tell somebody you're done, they can date other people. That's how it works. We're married. <laughs> so if we were just like dating, that's fine. But we're married true. and we live that, together. Just, that's true, but. And, and, and you got a good point there. You, you don't rush and do it, but if you say you're done, that's to me saying I want to divorce you. It may, but... Well, what did you want her to take away from that conversation? I wanted her to take away, oh no, I'm about to lose this person. Let me do better, not let me go and get on a dating app. That never works out that <laughs> way. When you hurt somebody to the core, it doesn't make, oh, I better do better. It just makes them want to hurt you. Clearly. Which is what she did. I'm just letting you know. I mean, it don't mean you were right. Yeah, I know I was wrong. Then I mean I you're right. But my understanding is you have some dating apps on your phone as well. Is that accurate? Of course. After I seen all the cheating activities she was doing, I, I was like, cheated. okay. And I purposely put an app on my phone so she could see it. I never <laughs> leave my phone in the living room. So I downloaded a dating app. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> when did relationships stop involving two people? You know, it's like, you know this, so I'm gonna go over here and do this over here because she hurt me over there. It's never a conversation or a discussion between the two of you. It's always you gotta reach out and grab a third party and pull them in with through dating apps or social media. That's why don't nothing work out. Because because you, you, you're you conducting your business on the World Wide Web and it just, it, it, it don't work. <laughs> I understand there's a whole lot going wrong, money problems, family problems, so I'm going to move off of this issue and move on to the next. You don't think her family approves of your marriage. Is that accurate? Those who do know are fine with it, but I feel like her family, um, they're pretty much, they think it's a phase for her. Are you worried about some of your family members finding out? Because they're going to find out now, but, you know, uh, <laughs> finding out that you're married? Ms. Wallace, you say you have concerns about Ms. Clyburn's maturity and her ability to contribute in a meaningful manner to the household. What's the breakdown, who, you know, percentage-wise? How much are you handling? How much is she handling? Hmm. <laughs> nice. So <laughs> Kayla's portion, what does that say, Joe? $345. $345. And what's the next thing? I don't have my glasses on. I can't Family see support, $300. <laughs> Your family helps support? Yes. You, they give you $300 a month? Yes. Really? Yes. D do they wonder when, you, when you're going to be on your own? I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure that they feel that way. Uh, I have supported family. If, 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 they, if, they, if anybody in our family needs help, we're going to help each other. That's how my family Let is. me ask you this. Why are you only working part-time? You know she's stressed about money. Why um, don't you just say, oh, okay, I'll kick it up a notch? When I am at work, if she, if she says something about the hours that I'm working, I will go to my manager and I will talk to her and say, hey, I, I need to pay rent. Um, can I have more hours? So it's not like I'm not trying. Lachey doesn't see that I'm trying, which I am, you know, stepping up as a wife, mm -hmm. um, which is something I need to work on, just, which is something I am working on. No, you, no, you see, I don't believe in working on that. Either you get more hours or you don't. You get a full-time job or you don't. There's nothing working on it. Okay. It's not like I work on losing weight, yes. <laughs> I work on, you know, finishing some, but you don't work, I'm working on, you just get a, you, you a full-time job. Yeah. You just, you know, I'm working on it. <laughs> you do it or you don't. Yeah. You don't think her family approves of your marriage. Is that accurate? Those who do know are fine with it, but I feel like her family, um, they're pretty much, they think it's a phase for her. So I feel like the marriage portion is the confirmation that it's not a phase, like this is forever. Right. And I don't think they like that. Right. 
Now, you know that's not her fault though, right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't blame her for it. Mm -mm. No. Does she fail to tell certain members of her family for fear that they will reject her? It's not Is that necessarily concern? fear. It's just we both tell who we're comfortable with telling. Uh -huh. It's not a thing of like being fearful. Mm -hmm. It's just a thing of, okay, I'll tell who I want to know. Yeah. Are you worried about some of your family members finding out? Because they're going to find out now, but you know, <laughs> uh, finding out that you're married? Um, yes, I am. Um, mainly because they, they don't understand this whole lesbian, gay thing. They don't right. get it. So whenever I try to explain it, it, it doesn't click. It's like you're going to hell. Oh, you, you. This is not. This is not what God wants you to do. I don't mm. got. I don't have time to hear that. I know what I want. I've never been with a man ever. I know that this is what I want. This is not a phase for me. It's never mm -hmm. been a phase. So to prevent hearing this, I don't mm -hmm. say anything. Which I probably, you know, should now. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, you, I, <laughs> I'd go home and mention it if I were you. <laughs> you say um, that Ms. Wallace isn't romantic. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Um, well, she can be romantic, but me, I'm the type that's like, oh, come here, baby, give me a hug, give me a kiss, give me the, like, hold, hold me, touch me. And she's like, no, like, leave me alone. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm, at least I'm here. Like, I just want to chill. I don't want to do all of that. With the whole sex intimate mm -hmm. thing, I love sex. I love having sex with her. When I have sex, it's great. But she's the type that's like, we're not having sex unless I want to have sex. So basically, I have to wait until she wants to have sex in order to have sex. Okay. So. So now, <laughs> now we're gonna be gentle. <laughs> Tell me about the romance. Are you? Is she more demonstrative than you are? Does or in, are you uncomfortable with showing affection? It's not that I'm uncomfortable. I do do it when I feel like doing it. But did you see the face she like, made when she said I do? I mean, it was like you were picking up dog poop or something. It was like I do do it. It's not even like that. Like I, I have, I work a full time job. I'm into like uh, bettering myself, so I'm always basically in school. Um, I have like an online business. I'm doing a lot because I have to pay bills mm -hmm. while she's thinking about sex and spending her money on wigs. Mm -hmm. So yes. I have to like, I have more stress than she does. She can, mm -hmm. she has the luxury of thinking about sex all day mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. her nails and hair. But that still don't. I got you. Let me help you with that one. I would do anything to fix this marriage. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes. If I could wave my magic gavel and ow, put a thought into her head, what would it be? What do you want from Ms. Clyburn? I wanted to take on more. If I, I mean, if I could just wave my gavel and bing, <laughs> throw a thought in her head and she will pursue it when she leaves, what would that thought be? I would like her to take on more responsibility, work a full-time job, and work on contributing more to the household. So in bottom line, she wants you to get a full-time job. Yeah. All of that yeah. speaks to, I need her to get, and you can do that. Right. You go home I know and do I that can. right away. I know. Now, are you not gonna do that? No, because... I'm going to do it because uh, for one, I need some more money. Um, two, I'm trying to save this marriage. I would do anything to fix this marriage. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So I'm gonna ask you the same question. If I could wave my magic gavel and pow, put a thought into her head, what would it be? Trust me. I'm, Why I do you feel like me. she doesn't trust you? Um, I know that I lied in the beginning. I feel like the whole ring incident just messed her mind up. And I get accused of lying a lot. I just, I want that to change. Another thing, uh, I want to be held. I want you to tell me that you love me. I want you to, I want to feel loved. I don't want to have to. Are you hanging on to that ring nonsense? No. Because that's some nonsense. I feel like. Uh, sex and affection is a prize. Like, how can you, how can you expect to have sex all day when I've been asking you to do the same stuff for months, the same stuff every day, you ain't implement nothing. I did, you but just don't see it. That's okay. how I feel. Let, let, let me do this, Ms. Wallace. She needs to know you love her. Give me 30 seconds of your best professional love. Okay. Look at her, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I love you because like you have a very positive and upbeat spirit. You're like a breath of fresh air. You 
uh, motivate me and you believe in me. And that's a great thing. Like, you're like something I never had. Oh, that was lovely. That was really That's one of the best actually. I've ever heard. I, I, it really was. That was that was wonderful. And you were embarrassed. You didn't feel like doing it, but but you bellied up to the bar and did a good job. I, did did, you, did yes, you feel that? Yes, I actually, I really did. I felt. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you that you felt that. I'm I not going to ask you to do the same thing because I think you bubble up with it all the time. <laughs> I do. I, I really do. I, I really do. think that, that, that you're very open with it. Am I right with that? She's always coming forth with it, and um, I know what's wrong and I know how to fix it. I love situations like this because I got two p good people doing the right thing, loving one another, that are getting tripped up by the little stuff. And you can fix the little stuff. Now, what she needs from you is for you to be responsible, yeah. to wonder about what the bills are, to engage in uh, affirmative efforts to make sure everything is all right. So you need to get a full-time job and you need to sit down and have discussions with her about money and tell her, look, babe, I'm gonna take this and this and this you ain't got to worry about it, because I got you like that. That's what you need to do. Okay. You said she was a breath of fresh air. Breathe her in. You are tight. You are just, you know, when I'm this and I'm just, one of the best and easiest and uh, biologically uh, rooted ways to feel less stress is to hold another person. You know, that skin-to-skin -skin contact, it releases oxytocin. It actually makes you feel better. That's what you ought to do. And when you talk about affection, it doesn't take any time. Five minutes throughout the day, a hug here, a kiss there. It may not be your go-to move. It may not be natural for you, because I don't think it is. But every once in a while, if you feed that, and if you respond to her maturing and stepping up, and she's only 21, She's two days past born. She's just a kid. I was a fool when I was 21. I was a fool that had money because, I, you know, I, was, I didn't waste it on nothing. But, but, but you understand, she's two days past born, so you got to give her a little room to grow up. Help her with it. Don't get mad that she doesn't do it. Help her with it. And be honest. Know that, you know, you, you, you could be a little flighty. Be a little more solid. You know, tell, talk to her about where you're going, what you're doing, what's happening, so, she, so you can build that trust and comfort that she needs. And every time she does something in your direction, put something on it. Throw a hug in there. Throw a kiss in there. You know what I mean? Little bit every day. Extraordinary change, because you're good people. Just messing up the little stuff. All right? Yes. You heard me? Yes. This matter's adjourned. Today I learned a lot from uh, Judge Toler. I think I'm gonna go home and try to be a little more affectionate, a little more understanding, um, try to listen to her more, and I think it'll work out. Um, Lachey, I, I messed up a lot, and I wanna do this right. I want you to wear this ring forever, and do not throw it away. <laughs> um, give me your left hand, baby. I love you, um, and too. I don't want you to take this off, okay? All right, <laughs> got it. Today on Divorce Court. I want to get married and I don't want to continue having the problems that I'm having in my relationship. He lies about little things and I feel like if you lie about little things, then you're definitely going to lie about big things. There are times I want to just give up on it and say forget it and move on. And that's the easy thing to do. When things get hard, you know I'm a runner. When I met her, I told her, I said, I'll never leave you. There's no communication in this relationship. We don't talk about things. All we do is argue. Although we've had troubles in our relationship, she has become my best friend. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Corey Gaskill and Carlin James. And the two of you have been uh, 
together for three and a half years, engaged for the last year and a half. You actually got a wedding date set, but you have some concerns, so you came here to me. You filled out my compatibility test and gave me your license with the right to uh, tear it up should I think your union is ill-advised. Ms. Gaskill, I'm gonna start with you. Tell me what concerns you have at this juncture and why. Well, I have a lot of trust issues with Carlin. Um, a lot of it's linked back from my childhood. Um, just growing up, mm -hmm. uh, my parents were busted for drugs when I was at about eight years old. I went to live with a family member and I lived there for a couple years, very abusive. They would take everything out of my room and just leave a blanket with a mattress. Uh, I would get beatings, severe beatings. Um, and it got so bad that DHR was called to my school one time and they came up there and took pictures, but they never did anything about it. So um, I ran away and I went to live with another family member and it was great. Um, you know, they really took great care of me. It was just, a, you know, but I just wanted to be with my parents. Right. I, didn't know my, I didn't know my mother at a young age. I didn't meet her until I was like 18. But I've always been a daddy's girl. Yeah, so. you know? All that bouncing around mm -hmm. lives with you, though, yes, and that lack of security. I mean, that it lives in the back of your head, and there's really this does. little shakiness there. How do you think that, that abandonment is affecting your current relationship? It's affecting my current relationship because now when we have issues or when we argue and stuff, I'm a runner. I just want to, you know, run away from the problem. I don't want to deal with it, you know. So, I mean, that's caused problems in our relationship because, you know, anytime we've gotten into a major fight, I'll just get up and go, you know, and I'll stay gone. How long do you stay gone? I stay gone for a month one time. Really? Is it kind of, I'm going to leave him before he gets a chance to leave me kind of thing, or I just, I don't want to deal with it? It's just that I don't want to deal with it. I love him and I want to be with him. But I just, you know, some of the issues that we're having is just, nonsense like if you don't know if you know what what I don't like and I know what you don't like then why are we doing the things that we don't like and just causing fights for causing, no reason ca causing complications mr. James yes, what is your point of view on this is well what do you see as the major problem in your in your relationship well I grew up in a two-parent household mm -hmm. um, both parents went to church um, mm -hmm. you know graduated high school went to college and along the way I kind of lost my way, you know. Mm -hmm. I got into the streets, yeah. you know. And um, I think that, that may have a lot, of, that may have something to do with why we go through the things we go through because both of us were in the streets at one time. Right. At a certain point. You know, I'm, I'm aware of her background and what she went through. But one thing I told her, I told her that when I first got with her, I told her, I said, I'll never leave you. You know, mm -hmm. and I upheld my end of the bargain. You know, but she, keeps but she can't. She can't. She yeah, can't yeah. stay. Yeah, all the leaving she done did, right? Right. I've managed to stay, right. regardless of what issue she had with me. I never left her for anything in the world. Well, give me an <clears throat> example of something that you fight about that becomes so ludicrous and so huge that you have to leave. Social media, Judge. Social media. Social media, really? Yes, Social really. Media. Okay. Social media, what is your concern <clears throat> in that regard? I'll give you an example. I was asleep one night, um, and, and I woke up, you know, someone's going on in the living room, I woke up and I, I looked at his phone, I was trying to see what time it was. And so I seen he had a message on his Facebook, and I get on the page, and there's a conversation with a girl through Messenger, and Basically, he telling this girl that how beautiful she is, you know, you so beautiful, all this other kind of stuff. Hold on just a minute. Let me ch uh, charge my phone. There was a face. Oh, let me charge my yeah. phone. Yeah, yeah, let me charge my phone. Then there was, you know how That's a messenger, you can tell, like, if they've been on That's FaceTime. Right, right, right. And there was two things with him on FaceTime. But then, what, but, but see, I had to... I had to download the app, Messenger app, because it was uninstalled. So when I installed it and looked at it, he's gonna say that he left his phone in the living room and that somebody else installed Messenger, wrote these messages, then uninstalled it. Yeah. Now, 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 now Mr. James, yeah. <laughs> before you say anything, I think you, you've been out technology right off the bat. I think she knows more about that machine than you do. Yes, ma'am. So when you give me an answer, just, just go ahead and tell the truth so we won't waste a lot of time on okay. technological issues, which I think you're going to lose anyway. Okay. All right. <clears throat> that night, right? Yeah. I went to bed a little early. She was already in the bed asleep. So I laid down next to her. Before I did that, I put my phone on the charger, all right? 
So I'll get up about 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning because the guy the people we were living with was making a little noise in the living room. So when I got up, I went to my phone and I seen the little, I seen a little message on there, but it didn't, I always get a message on my messenger. Shortly after that, she wake up and she's like, who's this girl you telling you beautiful? And I didn't know what she was talking about. Like, that's the truth. So, and, the, and one of the guys that I live with came to her and told her, said, said, I used the phone earlier. He told her that. He admitted to it. You know what Did I mean? Did God she, tell you that you used the phone earlier? I asked him if he had been on Messenger on Facebook on his phone, and he said no. That's a lie. There ain't no other explanation. Let me ask you this. We That's can talk right. about this all day, That's back right. and forth. Is this a constant theme in your, in your relationship that he's reaching out to other women through the yes. internet? Yes. We've been talking about apps and downloads <laughs> and messaging, but my understanding is, Ms. Gaskill, you just found out two days ago you are pregnant. Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about that. When uh, I had my apartment, he moved in with me. I ended up going to jail. But when I got out, all the people that's been coming over my house and stuff telling me he had this girl living in my house for the three weeks that I was in jail. Mr. James, explain that to me. Now, Mr. James, I thought you knew. I honestly did. You, you, you looked surprised. My understanding was that you knew she was pregnant. Oh, y'all yeah, knew it. I knew oh, you it. okay? That's you right. looked a little shocked. No, I but I, I, I just <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, we have a whole nother thing going on here. I didn't know anything about. No, nah, I knew it. I knew Are you it. concerned and worried because she's a runner? Yes, I'm concerned because. All right, let me give you an example. I want to say uh, sometime last year, right? We have this big fight or argument or whatever. Uh -huh. She leaves, end up in Utah somewhere. Now, prior to her leaving, she told me she was pregnant. Okay, I end up having to pay for her a bus ticket to come all the way back home, which took like five, like four to five days. Just before she get into the city we live in, she tells me she just had a miscarriage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, that been weighing on me for a while, right? right? So just recently, I asked her about it. I said, were you pregnant during that time? She told me she wasn't. So my thing is, why would you lie Right about being pregnant. So yeah, yeah I do have some concerns so, so, about some issues. Yeah. yeah right. Do you think she's telling the truth this time? Yeah, because I've seen the pregnancy. Oh, you saw the pregnancy. Right. So you know, so you so I don't have no issue this Ms. time. Miss Gaskin, why'd you lie to him? I just wanted him. I just wanted to hurt him because I was hurt. I mean, the reason I left in the beginning was because of social media. You know, I was really hurt. But he would call me every day and beg me to come home. What yeah, you heard about? I mean, even the stories you've told me about so far on social media, I haven't seen anything really like. Ratchet, like, you know, he was trying to hook up with somebody. Do you think he's actually touching another woman? Right now, I don't think he is, but do I think, think he has. Do you think he ever was? Past. Yes. And why do you think he has? Well, um, when uh, I had my apartment, he moved in with me. I ended up going to jail, and uh, he was supposed to come bond me out. And he didn't come bond me out, but come to find out, he was in jail too. But he got out before I got out, you know? But when I got out, all the people that's been coming over my house and stuff's telling me he had this girl living in my house for the three weeks that I was in jail. Now, Mr. James. That is, that is, and that, that is not and that true. the day before I got the day before I got let out, somebody had to come pick her up with all her stuff. And then and then, Judge, you know what happened? What? Two days later, he gonna come ask me, hey, this girl, the same girl, don't have no place to go. Can she come crash with us for a little while? Mr. James, explain that to me. That's not the same girl. Yeah, it is. That was two different girls. No, it's not. Well, no, now, wait a minute. Wait a second. 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 You are so busted. Wait a second. Wait a second. Mr. James, so we know that there was a girl staying with you while she was in jail, and we know that there was another girl you asked to stay with you once you got out. This much we know. The, girl, the, the, the person that was supposedly living there was her friend for, to begin with, okay? No, 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 no. Yeah, that never stops about... people. That never stops people at all. Well, she was staying at your no, house, she wasn't was she not? There. No, she wasn't. It was a lie. The people that were there, they didn't want us together anyway. And the same Everybody people that, lying on you. And the same people that didn't want us together, as soon as she got out, she, they told her, oh, I was doing this and doing that. Well, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing nothing. How do you know that? I was in jail, too. I got out of jail like two weeks before she came home. What do you people do? <laughs> I just, what, 
Oh, just, I'm, see, I'm, see, I'm trying to, I want to get past all of that. You know, I'm not trying to change. You can't get past it if you don't own up to it. I think what drives some people crazy is they see all this little bit of evidence of maybe you cheated, but you never say, look, yep, I did it, I screwed up, I want to move on and I'm going to be better. If you've done something, now's the time to tell it. She's, she, she's been pregnant for two days, you know what I mean? We just know about that. Yes, the nagging thought of it is killing her. Admit to what you've done, and I'm gonna get you through it. Okay, I may have been online, maybe a little inappropriately in the past. You know what I mean? I, I, I can admit to that. You, you flirted, I and can, the stuff that she saw, that. she wasn't wrong, she wasn't crazy, it admit. wasn't a glitch, right. she caught you. And so you own that, right? I own that. Yeah. Yes, and now that you've owned it, the two of you can decide that you're gonna have rules about it right. and not go past it, because whoever you're creating in that, right are relying on the two of you to get this thing right. Yes, ma'am. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, notwithstanding. Yes, ma'am. It's all about that. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gaskell, do you have a concern that your family does or does not like him because he's black? No, my family actually loves him. Uh -huh. uh, it's his family that, that has problems with the fact I'm that white. you're white. Yeah. Mr. James, is that accurate? Ms. Gaskell, Mr. James is black. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> Do you have a concern that your family does or does not like him because he's black? No, my family actually loves him. Uh -huh. uh, it's his family that, that has problems with the fact I'm that white. you're white. Yeah. Mr. James, is that accurate? In the beginning, uh -huh. uh, I think some of my family members may have had a issue. issue, but now like everything's smooth sailing now. Like they, they accepted her and. You know, they're allowing us to live our lives the way we want to, as long as we're doing right, you know? Do you feel the smooth sailing? I mean, his family doesn't treat me bad or anything. It's mm -hmm. just little comments. Like, one of his family members told me that they're trying to get used to me being uh, a, a person of my culture being in the house with them, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, mm -hmm. so I kind of took that as, like, you trying to get used to a white girl living in your house? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah, but, 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 can, can I say this? <laughs> Black and white is such a difficult thing to talk about. Right. right. But when you have a room just full of black folk, right. certain things get done and said that wouldn't be said in mixed company. That's true. That's <laughs> and true. I think there are households in which there are all white people, things get done and said right. Right. that wouldn't get done and said if that's I were right. in the room. That's and right. you can say I don't see color all you want to, I think you're a lie right. if that's mm -hmm. what you say. That's true. Right. People won't say that's true, but that's true. Yeah, right. true. So that is a thing that their family has to get used mm -hmm. to. And the fact they actually said it in front of you, I think is a good thing. Right. right. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it does change the nature of the conversation. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yes. And you need to be aware of that. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's a negative association with you, but you do change the character of the conversation. Right. right. You know what right. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, sooner, you know, after a while, it won't matter no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. in the beginning, it matters. Yeah. It, it, it changes the nature of conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you have any concerns about her ability to be a good mother to your child, given, you know, that she's a runner like <clears throat> that and she doesn't really have a good, and I'm not talking about you negatively mm -hmm. at all, but your past is what your past. Do you have concerns about that? Generally, she is a good person. And when she was running, we had put ourselves in some pretty messed up situations, you know, and I feel like our situation now is a little bit better. It's a lot better because I've changed a lot. I'm not in the streets anymore. I'm trying to, um, you know, find a job and do the right thing. And, right. And she's doing the same thing as well. So the path we're taking right now isn't the same path we were right. on then. Yeah. So, the streets are not family friendly. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. You know, so, there are a lot of free radicals in the street. You do the wrong right, thing right. just because you out there. Things, you, know? you can't miss it. Right. It falls on you. So I'm slowly, I'm, I'm slowly seeing the woman, you know, that she can can be. You know, I, I can honestly say that. You know? I got you. Yes, ma'am. I got you. I have hope. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna yes, tell you about my hope, my concern, mm -hmm. and my advice. Here's my hope, that you've had so much no family, that family is all you can see now. My hope is that you so much want to be that family for her that the streets will no longer call your name. Yes, my hope is that this baby 
will serve as the glue that cements you two together, despite whatever rocky background you may have had. Right. My hope is that you reach back to that family that you were estranged from and lean on them and use them as counsel and as strength and support because right. marriages have to be supported from without. The street does not support marriages. Disassembled communities don't support marriages. Mm -hmm. right. Married people support marriages. Right. And that's your best hope. Right. That is my hope. My right. concern is that when people start living an everyday life, when people get married and this go, they don't marry consciously. Mm -hmm. They fall into a marriage, they say we're married now, and then you deal with new problems with old habits. Right. right. Because that's what you do. That's the script in your head. It's easy to read that script because that's the one you know. The, the thing that you need to do, you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. You haven't read it. You haven't lived it. You don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. So my concern is that you will live that past script without trying to write a new one. Mm -hmm. right. My advice is this. You talk about everything all the time. That you have five minutes in the beginning of every day to hold each other's hand and say, listen, this is what we're fighting today. This is what I want for today. This is what I want for my baby. This is what I want for you. Because when you speak it, when you say it aloud, it makes you think about it before you say or do that stupid thing in the heat of the moment when something doesn't go your way. My advice to you is to not take your problems out of the house. Mm -hmm. if, if you're upset about it, don't get this and it, don't change your stats, don't, none of that. If there's a problem, nobody should ever know it. Everybody who sees all your social media, those are two of the happiest people I've ever seen in my life. I don't see nothing negative going on there. Because when you put negativity out there, people will chip at your relationship with it. They'll just use it as a safe enough to top it off. So social media, you just, that, hey, married world with married people, show, you know, and that's it. And that's it. And that's it, and that's all. So with that, that hope, concern, and advice, I wish you all the best. I think you're good people. Okay. Have a happy life and a Thank wonderful you. marriage. Thank you. Thank you. you know, things are looking up. Things are looking pretty up right mm -hmm. now at this point. So. I think we're going to try to count, uh, maybe some counseling or communication at the very least. We'll try to have better communication and just talk about things instead of yelling at each other and just work everything out. So I love you. I love you too. No. Today on Divorce Court, I'm getting referred to as the side chick. I'm in love with Aaliyah. I come home to her every day. She should understand that there's no other woman that's gonna stand in my way between me and her. He's been telling me he's gonna file for the divorce for three years now. Marriage is overrated. As much as I wanna say he's mine, he's really not mine because he still belongs to someone else because he's still legally married to this woman. I've been married for eight years. I'm not ready to hop on that saddle again. I wanna be with him, but I'm not gonna settle. I me and Aaliyah, our soulmates. We should be together. I want him to prove to not just me, but everybody else, that's not who I'll choose. I choose you. Divorce court is now in session. This is a disillusion of cohabitation. You two have been living together for two years and you have one child together. You do not want to be together anymore. Uh, Mr. Jones, you want $750 from Ms. Mole as you separate and we will talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Ms. Mole, I'm going to start with you. Um, how did we get here today? Well, today I'm here because I got tricked into being with Mr. Jones. When I first met him three years ago, uh, he told me he was still with his wife mm -hmm. legally, but um, he's in the process of getting a divorce. We worked together at the time, mm -hmm. and our HR um, services, they help us with getting a lawyer and everything. Mm -hmm. So he was just saying, you know, well, the HR is helping me get a lawyer, and um, I'm going to get a divorce. They're going to walk me through everything. They've been separated before I came along two, for two years, living right. out of the house. So it was just a matter of paperwork. Right. So 
we started dating. Everything was fine. Everything was cool. Um, a year later, we moved in together. Mm -hmm. um, once we moved in together and everything, I'm like, okay, it's a year later. I know divorces take time. I don't know. I never mm -hmm. was married, but I know, you know, maybe it took time. So I said, you know, hey, babe, what's going on with divorce? Now it's so many excuses on why he won't get a divorce. Oh, um, it's the money issue. It costs this much. It costs that much. We could be putting this money towards our bills. And then it was, oh, I don't see the urgency. It's just a piece of paper. It's just so many excuses on why he won't get a divorce. In the meantime, in between time, you two had a child together. No, we just had our child. My child, my son is five months. We just had him. We just had him. Yes. So, so... M M Mr. Jones, why don't you tell me why you're living with and have a baby with Ms. Mole, yet still unable to divorce your first wife? Well, Your Honor, I've known Mrs. Mole for going on two years. We've been yeah. dating, and we moved in together. And it's not like she didn't know the situation. Right. She knew beforehand when we was friends. I let her know beforehand, listen, I'm married, but I'm separated. Um, I am planning on getting a divorce. What's the hole up? <laughs> at first, she got to understand, at first, this is my child's, my children's mother. Right. All right, she... This is your children's mother, too. Uh, it is. But she has a, she, she has an illness, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? She had, uh, she had diabetes, then it moved into her getting dialysis, and, uh -huh. you know... Is she on I, your I, insurance? I know. This is the thing. I had insurance with the job that I was at, and I told her, listen, I'm not going to move in with a divorce because if I divorce you, I can't put you on my insurance if something happens. Right. So if something happened to her, it's so easy for me to go, well, switch it over and put her on it because legally I'm still married to her. Right. And I'm trying to, you know, explain to her, like, listen, this is still my children's mother. Like, listen, I, I got to make sure she's good for my kids to come up because Because if she's not girls. good, the kids are not good. I have girls. They need a mother. Mm -hmm. I can't raise the girls. Well, I can you could. raise them. Yeah. I can raise them, but I can't put that. I can't put that woman in them that they need. Do you have yeah. an active relationship with your daughters? Yes, I do. D does he? He does. Okay. Okay. But can I just say this, John? Yeah. He's saying that you know it was for the insurance and everything. Now he's mind you, I'm still at the job that we was working at. He left. Two years ago, he left the job. So it's not because of the so insurance anymore. So he doesn't have insurance. He doesn't, it's not because of the insurance anymore. Now he doesn't have the insurance on her. And he's saying, you know, she, he need to make sure she's, she's good. Why won't she be good because you're divorced? He's saying he's catering to her feelings. This is an issue that we have. He's catering to the way... What do you mean she's ca he's catering to her feelings? He's scared because, oh, she's sick. Oh, she ill and she's sick and this and that and, oh, oh because... She's sick, you know, I can't, I can't divorce her. It's gonna break her heart. You're breaking my heart by still being married to this woman. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I'm right with you. Your wife isn't okay, your kids ain't okay. I get that part. But does your wife know that you're living with Ms. Mole and have a baby with Ms. Mole and moved on? She didn't move on. And, you know, she makes That's life a little bit difficult for me. You know, uh, so she knows about Ms. Mole and the new baby, she, she knows but everything. she doesn't accept it. Exactly. She's she, still she, trying to get back with you. Exactly. And he won't put her in her place for trying to do those things. I, I have. Uh, I, hang on, hang, hang on, Mr. Jones. At some point, don't you have to stand by the decisions that you've made? I have to stand by every decision I make, and I do. But it's not like I'm a secretive person. It's not like I'm running around here telling her one thing and I'm telling her another. I put. My, well, we, what are you going to call her? Extra, estranged wife or estranged. separated? Estranged, yeah, estranged you know, wife. Gonna, I put her in her place all the time. <laughs> what? Maybe not the way she wants me to. She wants blood drawn. Right, right. This is still my children's, children's mother. mother. I, got, I can't be out here But you're not with her anymore. I'm not and with we, her. What, and, and if you're afraid of hurting her feelings, when you moved in with her and had a baby with her, all the feelings already got hurt. It's right. just a matter of paperwork now. I'm, I'm not afraid of hurting her feelings. I'm not afraid, because I, I keep it 100. So why don't you want to finalize the divorce? I do. I do. Now, I, now listen, we, we're to a place where, you know, it's just us. And I do want to. But right now, it's financial. Divorces are, ex are as expensive as you make them. 
In other words, filing the paperwork don't cost much. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Now, if everybody lawyers up and there are a lot of houses and stuff, then that becomes expensive. But okay. initially, all it is is a filing fee and a service fee, which ain't that much. See, I'm going by, you know, when I'm, when I'm reading little stuff and I'm listening to other See, people. See, anybody who's serious you know. about taking any legal action goes and sees a lawyer. Exactly. See, he's not serious about he's it. I know why you, you're it's... upset, because he's not serious. If you wanted to get a divorce, you would have talked to a lawyer by now to find out how much it costs. And just like he said, he put her in her place. He does not put this woman in her place. If I can approach, I have pictures, email of his phone. She calls him, she texts him, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, oh, Jay, I miss us so much. I'm laying here missing us. He oh, don't respond. God. He thinks because, oh, but I don't respond. She texts him, oh, Pookie, what you doing? What you doing, Pookie? He don't respond to her. Oh, I, I, don't, I didn't respond, though. No, you need to say, stop calling me these names. Stop doing this and stop doing that. That's stopping it in, in their tracks. And he doesn't do any of that. I he have doesn't done put, that. He Ms. doesn't Ms. put her Mr. Her Jones, we're going to have to talk about these, these emails because this ain't right. Me and her took some pictures, some racy pictures. Mm. <laughs> she sends them to someone, and the someone knows my wife. She sends the pictures to my wife, and that lights up the fire right there. Bonfire. Why would you send sexually explicit photos of the two of you to anybody? She's still very attached to you, your, your estranged wife, correct? Correct. And you haven't really done anything to disabuse her. Have you? I mean, because all of these texts go unanswered, and she's talking about, you're living out your dream with another woman, I still love you, all of that is happening, and your response is silence. How is that not disrespectful to Ms. Mole? Disrespect? The amount of disrespect that she gives is, is, well, is we're, not... And we're going to talk about you know that I mean? in a minute. But why, why don't you tell me why you are not more clear with your ex I am about clear. your intentions? And, and that's the thing, I'm clear. I can't be any clearer. I can't stop someone from doing things that I have no control, control. over. Control. You know, she sends these texts and she has my number. I, she has to have my number. Right. I have no choice in the matter about that. Mm -hmm. This woman, she loves me. I give her that, but I don't love her the way she wants me to love her. You understand? Right. She's my children. I'm going to keep stressing I, I get, that. I, I get it. I get I'm that. Oh, I, I, I get that. You don't have to say it. I, the first time, that's all I need. Ms. Mole. Are there any other things that you think that he does or allows that you believe is disrespectful towards your relationship with yes, him? Yes, he the, the text the text message he doesn't stop. He's saying he doesn't have time. He he doesn't he can't control her and he can't stop it. I feel like he is the control of the situation. What he says goes. How? I feel like if he says one time Listen, you need to stop. You need to respect. She goes as far as even texting the children. That roly-poly fat is not your mother. How? I'm your mother. How am I Why don't stop you it? stop it? How? Why don't but Ms. Ms. Mo, I, let me say this to you. You cannot control another person's conduct. If someone is bent on interfering in your relationship, the only person who can stop them interfering is the two of you. And that means don't let her come between you no matter what, what she does to you. Are you with me on yeah. that one? Yeah. He can't stop her. I need you to tell me about her temper and her anger that you say is, is driving you away in, in the face of these complications. Well, first of all, Yana, let's get back to disrespect. She lit the fuel. She, she threw the fuel on the fire. What'd she do? Me and her took some pictures, some racy pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some pictures that, you know, adults yeah, do yeah. sometimes, right, right, you know. Right. She sends them to someone and if someone knows my wife, she sends the pictures to my wife, and that lights up the fire right there. Bonfire. Forest fire. Why would you send racy... I don't even care if you know this person knows the wife or not. Why would you send sexually explicit photos of the two of you to anybody? You know what? It wasn't... You can't... It wasn't anything of me. You can't see anything. It was just him. And he said... <laughs> uh, this is even worse. <laughs> He's telling you this story, but he's not telling you the whole story. When we first started dating, he had a girlfriend that he refused to tell me about. No, she once knew I about found it. Out, stop, stop, stop. Once I found out about this woman, she texts me and said, oh, he says you're a woman, you're a female from work. So I sent her the picture. I said, does that look like I'm just a female from work? She goes back and 
texts the wife and says, oh, whatever she says. But, and then this is the thing. He comes home and he say, he's chewing my head up about it. Why would you send this picture? And then he, he calls the wife. He says, why would you do that? Why would you send the picture? I just got my head chewed off. I lit the fire. I should have never sent it. She's the root of the problem. He, I, I should have never sent the picture. But this he goes was back to her. He was boy. bashing me. And then she's the one. And she's not just showing it to him. She's the one going around. Now she's lying, going around, telling everybody that one he got an ear. Oh, he was doing this to me when, when we were still married, when we were still together. To this day, this was two years ago. To this day, she's still sending a picture saying it telling the people about, you know, this that picture you, and saying it, it, saying it was her. She's saying it was her. It was, he did this on her. I got you. I he got you. I, I, I got, I got it. I got she it. Knows I got how it. She no, is. stop it. Now I want to turn to the issue of her temper and her rage, and you will address that. I'm getting out the car. There's a female behind us. And all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, she jumps out the car. What you say? Oh, this in her face. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> like, Ms. Mo, can you explain your behavior? You say she gets grossly out of pocket when she's angry. Could you give me some examples of what she does? She gets angry. Loud, a dash of ratchet, <laughs> all that. Well, tell me about the dash of ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> Say we pull up to the chicken shack. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? We pull up to the chicken shack. <laughs> right after work, yep. we hungry. You Let's go chicken get some shack. chicken. I'm getting out the car. There's a female behind us, two of them in a the car. Whatever they're saying, I have no clue what they're saying. They're not talking to me. Mm -hmm. But for some strange reason, she thinks they're talking to me. And all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, she jumps out the car. What you say? All oh, this in her face. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> and I've never seen the side of her before. This was my first time. And I'm like, oh, and I'm standing there like, oh, what to do? And I don't understand, because she's, she's reading all right. The driver's sitting there looking at me. I'm looking at them. They're looking they like this. I'm going like this. I'm like, come on, man. Like, we don't Mo, can this. you explain your behavior? He is, this lady is trying, I'm trying to part. And she's like so into his face. And what are you looking back at her for? That was my issue. You were sitting there, y'all glazing each other's eyes for a second. I wanted to know what was the issue. She said something very rude you, to they me. They were gazing yes, in each other's eyes yes. at the drive-in <laughs> at the chicken shack. Yes. And you I'm like, really oh, believe that. Maybe Judge, he knew her or something. I was, I was getting up the car. And I was already frustrated from something that happened with, with something that was going on. Give me on, another so. dash of oh, ratchet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I want another dash of ratchet. One more. Just one oh, more. Oh, my goodness. Something, something ratchet, here you go. Let's add to the fire. We're going to a store. Right. She sees something she like. I think it was like a keychain or something. So she has, ain't this nice bed, da 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 da. We go in, we check out, we walk into the car, and she's swinging a keychain. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, I, I don't remember purchasing this keychain. What happened? Where you get that? She was like, what they don't know, won't hurt them. <laughs> I'm like, yo, son, what are you doing? I go to the store every day. Like, what are you what doing? Ms. Mo, do you care to explain that dash of ratchet? The keychain was like $14. Like, I just spent like $100 in that store. I should, des I deserve a free keychain for all that money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the problem. I got a lot of obstacles here. Let me tell you what I think the problem is and what you need to do about it. Ms. Mole, let me tell you the problem that we women have. The problem is that we are far too willing to latch on to a guy, available or no, and make the other women in his life who may have preceded her the problem. And any woman out there that might get anywhere near him are a problem. And you become 
a crazed individual trying to secure this guy and you believe that the rest of womandom is going to snatch at him like you did when he had a wife and a girlfriend. That's how your world runs. So you'll always be afraid and you'll always be angry. And the woman at the chicken shack will always make you mad because we have a certain system in which we have failed to respect and dignify one another. We have found ma male companionship so compelling and so demanding and maybe so rare, I don't know, that we will do any undignified thing to be with one. And that's our fault. I think this guy loves you. I think this guy feels guilty as all daylights about his wife. I don't know what kind of Roman he does and why he is marriage with his first white in it. I can't, I can't label you a good guy, I can't label you a bad guy. I do label you as a guy that takes advantage of the situation that you got a whole lot of women and a whole lot of options and you take them as you please. Mm -hmm. You are living the life of a polygamist. You know, you've got this one woman, you're married to her, you're nice to her, you come, you keep it all cool and right over there you say it's because of the with kids, but it's really the easiest road for you and for your conscience. You had that other girlfriend, I don't know why that other, other marriage ended. I'm sure that girl had something to do with it or some other girl or something like that. Then this one got along, she got you close enough, she got you in the house, had a baby with you. Now you're trying to secure your position. As long as we're fighting each other like that, he will remain a polygamist and he will never suffer for it. You'll never get what you want and we'll all be angry all the time. I don't know the answer to that problem. I can't get mad at him because he's not divorcing her. I can't get mad at you because you believed him. All I can say is woe is us unless we decide to do something else. Best of luck to the both of you. This matter is adjourned. <laughs>
I had been praying for a Christian woman, a Christian wife. We could walk up this way together. And this is how we, when I saw her and, and uh, seeing that we knew each other, I just you said knew, this you is knew it. That, that was it. That, that was, was it. it. Well, Chaplain Betty, why are you here? Why are you concerned about whether or not you should actually jump the broom? I'm 69 years old, and uh, Gerald is baby. He's 68. And um, <laughs> baby, <laughs> we're kind of set in our ways, and um, our worlds are, were totally different. We still are. Um, and give me some examples of how your worlds or the way you do business differ. Okay. I'm a chaplain, Gerald's a deacon, mm -hmm. um, and we both were raised in, in a church keeping the Sabbath and all, but I ended up in a Sunday church, and he still was in the Sabbath keeping mm -hmm. church. And um, I'm also, um, I'm degreed, and he's not. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and being a chaplain, my position is higher than his, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And, and there was a lot of things that I would say, speaking to my friends, and you know, the way I talk, he didn't quite understand. Mm -hmm. And so I would use, like, use brevity, you know, mm -hmm. when he, because I'm in the hospitals and all, mm -hmm. and in jails and that kind of thing, and I don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. during the day to, to talk. And so he didn't quite understand some of those things, and, but we've since worked mm -hmm. that out. Mr. Frazier, she was saying that you're on different, ed different educational levels, and that at some time uh, caused a little bit of friction. Is that an accurate recitation of what went on? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, certain ways that she's been accustomed to, to living and certain ways that I have. And so we would uh, kind of hassle back and forth with each other. Well, give me an example of something you would hassle over. Overwhelm. When um, I had it in my mind that overwhelm was, was when a person is happy you know, and, and uh -huh. that they, they really, over, but when she would tell me she's overwhelmed, she was talking about it being in a low stage. Yeah. You know? and, and so we would kind of hassle out about that, you know, and. and so y'all fighting over the word <laughs> overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. And it's pejorative meaning, but it's like I'm, I'm overwhelmed with joy yeah. or I'm just overwhelmed <laughs> by circumstance. Yeah, like. Who she, won that one? She, well. She did. Yeah, okay. But uh, the brevity, we, uh, she was telling me that you know how you cut the, you use your words, cut your words down. Mm -hmm. And so when she told me that, it's like you get the attitude where, man, you know, uh, am I going to be able to, <laughs> to cope with this, you right. know, because she's knowing words and saying words to me that I don't quite understand. Right. Uh, but as time went on, yeah. she has taught me and... and uh, Did you get the feeling that she was trying to adjust who you are or mold you a little bit because she wanted you to be a little bit more like her? Not like her, but... Uh, Kick to, your game up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> taking the ghetto out to you. you know? I never said that. <laughs> Deacon Frazier says you're trying no. to take the ghetto out of him. No. Is that no. true? No. No. He, um, he was speaking in his church and he wanted to learn how to teach and all, teach mm -hmm. the Bible and all. And um, I was saying use brevity, but also enunciate and, and, and use a little cadence. He was asking for my help. Mm -hmm. So I was giving him you know, because I love Gerald, mm -hmm. exact. you told me, I watch you twice a day, well, every you. single day, other than weekends. And um, I also, I, I counsel um, with relationships and all, and I use a lot of your stuff, mm -hmm. almost everything. And um, you told me to, when you get a man, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, you get who you, who you, who you get. Yeah. This is who he is. You get the and, man you pick, right. not the one Thank you hope you'll you. become. You that one. Yeah. Okay? And so I took that to heart. And, and that's exactly, I love who he is. Mm -hmm. I love who he is. But when you're asking me to help me out, and, and he has grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. He really has. But you can't complain about something you're asking me to do. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Did, did it get on your nerves a little bit? Did she know when to stop correcting and adjusting? Did she know when to call it a day? <laughs> yes, but she had been accustomed to living a certain way because of her. She was married uh, for 30 years, mm -hmm. and she had been accustomed to living this, this way with him, and uh, he passed. 
But when I come along, it's like I'm having to learn her ways and she's learning my ways and it's, it, it's rough. It's rough, yeah. And that leads me to the, the next issue I want to get on because I thought it was very, very important. You described your ex-husband in your papers as a saint, which is deep. I did? I didn't mean to. Well, he was. Or at least you have that feeling about him, and, and, and I want to know how you feel now, how he compares to Mr. Frazier, and if you feel like that that's any impediment to your ongoing relationship. Gerald has procrastinated on his um, license and other things, but the apartment issue is the really bad one because we cannot live in my home. Are you dragging your feet, Mr. Frazier? Are you just, what's the problem? <music> Chaplain Betty, why don't you tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about your 30-year marriage because that, that really changes and defines who you, redefines who you are. Um, it was practically perfect. I was bedridden for 15, totally bedridden for 15 of those years of the marriage and had to depend on him to do everything for me, to lift my head and um, to fix my hair, to do everything for me, to dress me. Um, and then I was in a wheelchair for 12 of those 15 years. And um, this man, I begged him to divorce me because I was dying and I knew that it wasn't fair to him. And he stuck in there and took care of me and my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, um, helped raise them. And um, I see a lot of um, similarities in, in uh, Gerald. He would do the same thing for mm -hmm. me. I know he would, um, because he took, Gerald took care of my mother mm -hmm. um, three or four times and was willing to marry me knowing we mm -hmm. would have my mother. Um, he's one of the most fantastic persons I know. But Gerald is totally different than Norman, and I like it that way. Mm -hmm. And when I met Gerald, I was still grieving, even though it was 12 years. Mr. Frazier, do you feel at all compared to, to her ex-husband? Because he sounds like a wonderful dude, and I mean, I mean, it, you're not in competition with him, clearly, mm -hmm. but sometimes maybe you feel like you're in competition with the memory of him? Well, I know. We, uh, we the first time we had met, we went to a restaurant, and um, <clears throat> I asked her, well, it's for our engagement party. And they were going to give the engagement party at a restaurant. So I told her, I asked her a question, how much is uh, the cost going to be? She said, oh, we don't worry about the cost. Our family just goes on and, and uh, pays whatever it may be. Well, I got upset because I felt like, you know, why am I going in here not knowing what I'm going to have to pay for where she said they don't think about it. So we hassled out about that. Now, Chaplain Betty, did you do that? I mean, I don't care how much money you have. Y'all don't know how much stuff costs. Gerald is extremely cheap. And I am, <laughs> admit, I'm extremely extravagant, but I think that we're He's gonna balance. extremely He is cheap? extremely. And I think that we're gonna balance that out, though, because I do need to pull back. No, what it really was is that we were originally supposed to go to um, uh, uh, well, let's um, not get all into the details of okay. what restaurant you went yeah. to. My understanding is that you have a problem that he's procrastinating and that he won't get an apartment so you can get married because you don't want to start your new life in a house where your old life was. Tell me what the problem is there. Yeah, my husband died in the tub there. Mm -hmm. And the mem we have 30 years of memories there, but I want to make new memories with with Gerald on our own, and it, it'll just be our So memories. what's he not doing? The original plan, we were supposed to get married in June, and he was supposed to have been in Kansas City, because he lives in Detroit, and I live in Kansas City. He was supposed to be there at least two months prior to our wedding, get an apartment, and we was, because there's plenty of them there, and we were supposed to move right into it. And Gerald has procrastinated on his um, license and other things, but the apartment issue, it's the really bad one because we cannot live in my home. Are you dragging your feet, Mr. Fraser? Are you just, what, what's the problem? Well, I, I'm not accustomed to moving from state to state. And when I had asked her, uh, when she had said something about finding an apartment, I felt as though that was, she could find out more so than me. 
because I have never been, been there. there, and that's her territory. Yeah. She knows it. Yeah. She's got it together. Yeah. That, that sounds rational to me. Uh, but Your Honor, I bought my very first house at 21 years old. Mm. I have not lived in an apartment or gotten one since I was 17. I've only bought houses. I don't even know how to rent or get an apartment. And I did look and look and look and even gave them not, not, to not Gerald. Not Betty, I'm gonna call you on that one. That's ridiculous. I'm, I, I'm haven't sorry, had I, just... I haven't had an apartment since I was a little person, but it's very easy to figure it out. You go over there, you title over there, you get a lease. You know, okay, it, when it's I tried not that to, hard. When I tried to do it, I did do it, and I was asking other people that had done it. I didn't know about the, the fee and the this and the that and the other, but I learned. And then I gave him, told him, but they wanted him to come there and, and fill sign out the application and, do all and all, that, all yeah. this other stuff. I even found a person that would waive that and email it and let me do it that way, and Gerald still I wasn't ready. My understanding is that you believe that his family hates you, and they I do. want to talk to you about that. Mm -hmm. I understand you think she needs anger management. Well, at times I get kind of hard-headed, but when she tries to tell me things or we don't see eye to eye, she gets upset with, with me. Do you believe you need anger management? Why do you think his family hates you? You seem like an awfully charming woman to me. Because they, um, they felt that Gerald, Gerald was uh, supposed to stay in Detroit, and they wanted to know, out of all the women in Detroit, why did you have to get one in Kansas City mm -hmm. and all? And so um, they, they don't deal with him that hardly at all, because if they did, we wouldn't have gotten as far as we right. did. And uh, his own family came and was telling me all kinds of awful things. What which, kind of awful things were they uh, saying? Saying that he was a drunk, which I know he isn't, saying that he just wanted me because I, my home is paid for and all, mm -hmm. and he just won th those kinds of things, and say, just saying all, just lies. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, but I, let, let's let Mr. Frazier talk a little okay, bit. Now, yeah, you know. Yeah, they Give him some room to breathe. Yeah, I'm they, sorry. They, but Mr. Frazier, what, what, what they, was your family saying to you? They, was, uh, they wasn't saying it to me, they were saying it to her. And uh, I, I couldn't believe that they were going back saying these things to her about me when I was uh, younger, how I used to drink and, and uh, go here and do different things. And I was like, why would they come to her and that, tell her these things? Something from five decades yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, and uh, trying to kill her spirits from uh, talking to me. And then they would say, oh, you spending more time with her than us, but I've been there in the city for years, and I can't hardly get them to come by. Come and by and see me. you. No, yeah, yeah no. Uh, After a certain age, they yeah. don't drop by no more. Yeah. They just they, they they leave you alone mm -hmm. and, until you're breaking, and somebody has to take you. I understand you think she needs anger management. Yes. Uh, she seems pretty calm to me. Oh yeah. How excited uh, does she get? Well, at times I get kind of hard headed, but when she tries to tell me things or we don't see eye to eye, she goes off on me. But uh, she Goes says, off, what does that look like? Well, she hollers at me. She, she gets upset with, with me. And um, then it leads from one, from one upset to another upset. Yeah. And we're both at each other's throat. But when all said and done, we kind of see the eye, eye to eye. eye, eye. You can figure it out. Yeah. Uh, do you believe you need anger management? Not, well, I didn't need it until I met Gerald. <laughs> um, but no, Gerald yells. He gets, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't mean it, but when he gets excited or he's, uh, loud. he's, he's very defensive uh -huh. and all, and I tell him, I love you. I'm going to deal with whatever it is. You don't have to be defensive with me. But he yells, and I, I don't speak loudly, never. Mm -hmm. And I can't stand the yelling. It, 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 up, it makes it me sick. It sounds like you're the one that needs he anger does. management, not her. <laughs> yeah. And well. The way she describes yeah. it, but I'm gonna leave you. I looked at your compatibility test, uh -oh. and I'm gonna say a few things, and then we're gonna call it a day. Usually when I read compatibility tests, it's, it's an exercise in anguish. You know, it's just this nonsense and silliness and foolishness. And you guys wrote the most beautiful stuff to the most mundane of questions. I mean, it was like, 
This is what I will give my intended spouse, love, joy, peace, and happiness. I will work together with him. You know what I mean? It was just fabulous. Even when you, I asked a question about cheating and, and uh, you said, I'm not interested in that. I am devoting my time to my wife. The reason why I'm getting married again is I want to put all my time into her. I mean, woo! I mean, all of it from both of you was just fantastic and wonderful and lovely. Now, Mr. Fraser, I don't, I, you know, you seem like you're doing all right, but you got no time to waste. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm telling you? <laughs> you know, I mean, just, I'm That's just saying. What I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The clock is moving. Yeah. And it's not falling in your direction. <laughs> so if what I would do if I were you was go ahead on, you know, figure out the lease, make that move, don't listen to your family because they ain't coming by to see no. you. No way. <laughs> Get this marriage certificate and go on and marry that woman. Best of luck to both of you. You are great. Thank you. I do need to work on my anger. Um, and I do need to be a little bit more patient with you, but I do want you to move it up a little bit. Well, I'll, I'm gonna try my best to step things up and to, to be the person that I should be and that I get to stop procrastinating and go on and do it. Oh, you are. <laughs> you are. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Dominique Parker and Ron Dixon. The two of you have been together, get this, seven years. Wow. Still can't decide whether or not they should get married, so they've come to me for my advice. They gave me a copy of their marriage license with permission to tear it up should I find that their union is ill-advised. They've given me a compatibility test, which you took, which alarmed me. So I'm gonna talk about that later, but before we get to that, Ms. Parker, I'm gonna start with you. I know you love him, you've been with him seven years, why are you hesitant to marry him? Because Ron stays out a lot. Um, he'll come home from work on a Thursday, leave out to go hang out with his friends, won't return home for a couple of days. Um, a couple of days? A couple of days, yes. One Thursday, we, he knew he was gonna have a storm, I waited for Ron to come home, he didn't. About three or four o'clock in the morning, during all this rain, and our area was flooded. So in comes Ron, three or four o'clock in the morning, drunk as usual. Um, in his mind, he figured I was cheating or whatever reason. He packs all his stuff up, proceeds to go out the door, and like I said, it was flooded. So when he took one big step, him, his clothes and everything else went with the water. His clothes going one way, Ron went the other way. <laughs> so after that, Ron came in the house and proceeded to do it again. And my thing is, when Ron stays out, get drunk with his friends and everything else, that really bothers me. That, that, it bothers me a lot. And I tell Ron, this bothers me. But still, Were Ron- Were you drunk rolling down the river with your clothes <laughs> because you walked out in a storm? Judge, I wouldn't say I was drunk. I had been drinking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I did come home because of the storm. Being that the area was flooded, we have tunnels. Right. And through the tunnels, you know, it was a water advisory, so I couldn't make it there at the time. Right. However, what I did do was be ill-advised to the advisory and still made it home. Even though it was 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I still made it there so that I can be with her throughout yeah. the storm. But once you got there, did you leave again while it was still flooding? No, I couldn't leave because it was flooded. But she said you were outside riding the tide. <laughs> <laughs> Did nope. that happen? What happened was we had gotten an argument because I came in at that particular point in time. And rather than sit there and argue with her, I just decided that I would grab a couple of things and I would just leave. Now see, that's nine pound of ridiculous. You've got a life-threatening situation outside the home. You've got a woman inside the home. You're going to risk your life and her safety by going out in a river because you don't want to argue. I you mean, see what the problem is? Yeah, there? but why, why would I sit there and continuously listen to arguing and nagging? Because it's flooding out. <laughs> That's why you don't want to drown. I mean, I, I feel like I would have been okay 
I mean, I was in a vehicle. It wasn't as high as, you know, the vehicle was. So I felt like I could have just got some things. Even if I would have just sat in the car, no, I could have no, no. just camped out in the car for that night. I get tired of waiting on him. Yeah. This is, is, this an, is this a frequent event? Yes. Give me kind of the expanse, what you see about his failure to come home. Once again, say he's going out hanging with his friends or coworkers. And he would go hang out, but it'd be, okay, Ron, it's, um, I text Ron, okay, it's such and such time, he'll say, I'm coming, I'm coming, babe, I'm coming. The next thing you know is a day or two later. So it's like, it's always, I'm coming, but you never come home. But I know where he's at, is the point is, I don't care if I know where you're at or who you're with, if you're with your friends or not, you're supposed to be home with me. Do you, when you leave, do you stay for several days? No, not all the time, Your Honor. There yeah. has been On instances. Occasion. No, there has been instances where I have, but she makes me do these things because of her attitude and her nagging and her complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm like this. I'm not going to sit here and argue or fuss and fight with you. I just rather eliminate myself from the situation and let cooler heads prevail. What does she typically argue and fuss and fight about? Well, it can be just with me uh, being out with my friends. She know when she met me that I had a close uh, knit circle of friends. We all get together at various times. We go out, we drink, we hang at each other's houses. And sometimes it can be late into the wee hours of the night. It can be late because, I mean, that's well, something that come? we do. Oh, I've invited her on, on several occasions. However, she don't indulge like that. She doesn't drink like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, a lot of times when we're out late, that's not her thing. She's not right. one to stay out right. late a lot of times. So, you know, now, she knows Nick, where I'm let at. Let me ask you a question. You get a woman, you know, first of all, you're single, you're running around, you're doing okay. what you want to do. And you find a woman you like, and you bring her home, and you install her in your house. Do you alter your behavior at all as a function of the fact that your domestic situation has changed? Yes, I have. I've, I've altered my and behavior a great deal of And tell me how you've altered your behavior. What's, what's different? now that you have her? Well, a lot of things is different. Like I said, I, a lot of this is in the beginning where I don't stay out like I used to. Um, I communicate with her more. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot mm. of times I, I be willing to spend time with her. However, when I'm there, her thing is she's in the phone. That's my issue with her. Okay. She's either on social on media or playing games. Now, Ms. Parker, now, now, wait a minute, now take a moment. Take I, a deep I, breath, I'm, I'm lean trying, back. Ahead. Yeah, I, I'm leaning way back. Are you, when he is home, is it a pleasant pace place for him to be? Or is there attitude or electronics and nothing else? Um, it could be our attitude in the beginning. My phone, because I'm always with my phone. He's not home. <laughs> That's her problem. She's with the phone. I'm with my phone. But when he does come he home, comes do home you and he put goes the to phone sleep. down? He said we cannot communicate. I get more communication out of him when he's drunk and asleep. I can ask him any kind of questions and he will answer them. So therefore, he can't say when he's home, he don't want to be bothered. He's on the same phone I'm in, he's in his phone too. He's on social media talking to this person and that. He still, he just left his friends and still talking to them on social media. So what do I suppose to do? Yeah, I see what the problem is. But beyond that, I understand that Ms. Parker, you've got some attitude problems that has to be addressed. Out of the blue, here she comes, steaming, steps in between me and the female. I'm his lady, why are you in his face? And I'm sitting there trying to explain to her that this is, you know, this is a mutual friend of ours, you know, this and that, and we're now, talking about a ceremony. Now, did you do a frontal assault on a woman you didn't know because you were concerned about what was going on? So, Mr. Mr. Dixon, I'm gonna start with you. You say she has attitude problems, that she's angry and jealous. Give me your, the best story you have to illustrate that. Well, Your Honor, one time, we were out with some friends. We were at a bar. Now, this was a childhood friend that I've been knowing for a long time. She's also associates with a mutual friend of ours as well. Mm -hmm. So we're out. And we're, we're conversing. She comes to me. She said, hey, Ron, I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm going to let you know that I'm having a graduation ceremony for my son. I want you to take my number, and I'm going to give you the, the number to get to the place where, you know, you can come and help us celebrate. Out of the blue, here she comes, steaming, steps in between me and the female. And what'd she do? I'm, what, are you, what, are you, what are you taking his number for? Why are you in his face? Give me the I'm full gesture. Lady. 
Was I there mean, anything else going on physically? I mean, no. It was just her body language, neck rolling. She was in the way. Uh, who is? Who are you? I'm his lady. Why are you in his face? Why are you giving him your number? And I'm sitting there trying to explain to her that this is, you know, this is a mutual friend of ours, you know, this and that, and we're now, talking about a ceremony. Now, did you do a frontal assault on a woman you didn't know because you were concerned about what was going on? Yes, because Ron had, when he, he has a lot of female friends, grant that. He can have female friends, but I can't have guy friends. That's, he's one-sided, he's so one-sided. But every time we're at this place, he has females jumping on him, mm -hmm. hugging him. But if I would've did the same, like, the same place, I have a, Mutual Facebook friend. How you know these people? So he, hey, Diamond, how you doing? Gave me a hug. And Ron watches from the front door, came in at me. If I see him hugging on you again, we're going to have problems. Because but it's OK. Is that accurate? No, the difference with her female friends is this. The female friends that I have, we grew up. It's nothing sexual. It's nothing more. So it's no say. other type of attraction. Her guy friends, they're looking for something more. What, 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 now, 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 I'm going to talk about that for a minute because you have a specific concern with the re respect to the way she dances, which gives you ideas about the way she's dealing with the dudes in her life. So why exactly. did you tell me what your concern is? Well, Your Honor, at one time, we were in a Mexican bar. <laughs> and, you know, the music is playing and, <laughs> and things like that. So her uncle wanted to go, we need to go get some more cash. He was drinking a little bit, so they asked me to drive for him which is, I say, only about 10 minutes away. So we get in the vehicle, we drive. I tell her, sit here at the and table. And you know it's ratchet, because she's smiling back. already. Right. We're coming back. You know. It would only take 10 minutes. Um, I tell her, watch my drink. We'll be right back. We're going to get the money and come back. So by the time we go get the money, come back to the bar, I go to the table. I'm looking for her. She's nowhere to be found. So keep in mind, I'm looking around. Everyone is 5253. Five, here I am, 64. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I can see clearly across the dance floor. Right. I'm looking and I'm looking. And all of a sudden, you know, I see a little crowd gathering. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm looking and I see her. She's dancing with the guy. Now keep in mind, it's Latino music play. Right. But she's up there like she's Beyonce. <laughs> Gyrating, shaking the butt, and is all she, up on she, the Was guy. she dropping it? Dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> was there any twerking? She was so close with this guy, she left no room for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it made the story worth it right there. No room for Jesus. Clearly what we have here is two people who simply don't trust each other. So I got to figure out why is it you two have been together for seven years, but don't trust each other? For one, you were left alone, so I was hurt. It made me feel like I wanted to be there for you. Also, it hurt me and it put distrust in me because it made me feel like I couldn't trust you because you didn't let me know. So it was a mix, a mixed emotion there that it was hard for me to describe, you know? And, and it just, it, it hurt me and it pained me. tell you what jumped out at me. The one just red flag, alarm, five alarm fire thing I saw. My understanding is Ms. Parker had an abortion and did not tell you. Yes, she did. How did that make you feel when she had that abortion and didn't tell you? Did that change radically your decision whether or not she would be a person with whom you could build a life? Well, it made me feel... Tell her. Well, it made me feel like that, for one, you were left alone, so I was hurt. It made me feel like I wanted to be there for you, to go through what you went through, because I know that wasn't easy. Also, secondly, you know, it, it hurt me, and it put distrust in me, because it made me feel like I couldn't trust you because you didn't let me know. So it was a mix, a mixed emotion there that it was hard for me to describe, you know? And, and it just, it, it hurt me and it pained me. But at the same time, you know, I didn't know what to think and how to look at you, but I, do, I did empathize and sympathize with you. Thank, very well said. Now, Mrs. Parker, I'm gonna give you an opportunity. Tell him why you felt like you had to do it. Tell him. I had to do it because you wasn't there. How do I know you was at, you feel these things? You didn't show it. You was with someone else. So how do you think that made me feel? You're talking about your hurt and pain, but you not 
and don't realize the pain that you caused me. That was painful on me. That was very painful on me. Did you hear her? Yes. Did you hear him? Yes. This is how you have a conversation, people. This is how it gets done. This is a before your vows, not a break my heart. <laughs> so I want you to take 30 seconds, Ms. Parker, 30 seconds, why he's the dude. Despite all this, don't say nothing negative. Give me something to work with. Why might he be the guy for you? Because he's a driven person. He's a lovable person, and I know he is. I, I love him because who he can be and who he actually is. I love him for his flaws. I love him for everything he actually is. I don't look at that because there's genuine love there. That's not too good. <laughs> I love him for his flaws, but you don't say, you know what I mean? But, yes. you, but you're mad about his flaws and you're angry about his yeah, flaws. Yeah, but I still love him so for that, So what you're telling me is he's really flawed, but I love him anyway. <laughs> yes. And, <laughs> C minus. I'm gonna work with that <laughs> for a little bit. He said C minus, I'll take that. <laughs> Mr. Dixon, do better than she did. 30 seconds, why you love her? Well, she's a very, very attractive person. <clears throat> she's been there for me. Uh, I know that she will be there to have my back. However, I also know that, you know, during the times where we was going through something, she stuck in there. I love her because she's funny, she's witty. Uh, she's also a driven person, Your Honor. And, you know, she's, she's always there if, if I'm feeling down to give me a word up. Uh, she's, she's a spiritual person. She always has faith that I don't have somehow, you know, and, and she just keeps me going. You know, she, she says things, she encourages me, and she's always uplifting. Brother got an A. He got it. <laughs> Brother got it. He got it. And that's what I love about him. And now, I'm going to tell you what I think you ought to do about what we got going on right here. As raggedy as your situation appears to be, I'm a fan. And I'm going to tell you why I'm a fan. You're two mature people. You're making young people mistakes. But I think that you have a, the capacity to go beyond that, especially because of what you said, Mr. Dixon. I think everything he said about you is absolutely 100% true, that you are down for him, that you're there for him, that you're witty, intelligent, and encourage him. I'm going to tell you what I wrote down when I saw your compatibility test. I said, neither one of them knows what it is to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You two are like LeBron James and Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be like Steph and Durant and LeBron and Kyrie. I know they traded him, but that's the only name I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're conducting a single life while you're trying to pursue a committed life, and that's not going to work. It's going to be the team Parker Dixon if it's ever going to work. Team Parker Dixon comes first. You come home more often than you go out. And when he does come home, you reward him with your time and your attention and your love. Make him happy that he's there. Work to make sure that, and make her happy that you came home. Don't fight to remain single. Don't fight for your right to gyrate. It's not, <laughs> that's not what, you know, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't do that around because I got a husband now and I save all my best stuff for over there. And that's what you have to do. You two are both trying to be successfully single while having the other one installed as a partner. That doesn't work. Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's a conversation. It's a discussion. It's about how we're going to get to where we're going, not how often can I get out or how mad can I get, how low can I go on the dance floor, or how many women I can see. It's all about how can I make his day better? How can I make her day better? How can I change who I am and what I do to make this a valuable union? You don't know what it is. You're mature people, you're people who have jobs, you work, you should work it out. Now I'm not gonna give you your, your uh, license back because y'all ain't ready. But I'm gonna send you to a counselor who's gonna get you in a position to get ready. 
And that's what I hope you do. This Thank matter you. is adjourned. When I heard um, how Ron felt about me, I feel that we can make it. He can be husband material. That we really can go further in this. As far as the things that she didn't like about me hanging out as much, so what I'm gonna do is work on that and start to come home more, put a little bit more time into our relationship uh, when I am home so that we can make this thing work.